When I was about eight or nine years old, some of my cousins and I were sitting around watching Sábado Gigante, a Spanish variety show that has been on the air since our parents were little children. During that age, they had a weekly beauty contest for little girls called Miss Chiquitita, or Miss Little One. My cousins and I realized that because of our big frames, we would never qualify for such a competition. So we decided to put on our own pageant of sorts, Miss Gordotota, or Miss Fat One. The show was replete with singing and dancing routines, our family serving as judges to crown a winner. It was not a negative appraisal of ourselves, but rather an admission that we did not fit the mainstream concept of beauty and an assertion that we were beautiful nonetheless. I don't think I was conscious of this as a child, but I was always striving to or desiring to be white, desperately trying to accept myself for who I was, but at the same time always wanting to be conforming to that standard of beauty. I think that even from childhood, in one form or another, this Eurocentric ideal of beauty, this Eurocentric standard, um, which essentially entails being thin, being light-skinned, having European uh, quote-unquote delicate features. A big part of, of that for me is just this relationship I have with my, grand, my Panamanian grandmother. Uh, I don't think she intended it, but she has always been very vocal about how she dislikes my hair. Um, to the point where oftentimes I would straighten it, but then there came a point where I chemically straightened my hair and just stripped my hair of its natural curls. That's been huge for me because I developed a self-hatred for my hair and didn't really understand why. I think the reason my grandmother despised my hair, maybe despised is too strong of a word, but is because I think it's a pretty strong reminder that, that I have black blood running through my veins. This is like some kind of hybrid of, I don't know what, it's thick, it's, it's curly, it's unruly. Um, and black is still stigmatized um, in Latin America and everywhere else. I guess for a long time to my grandmother, I felt as if I was a failure. I just never fulfilled this standard of beauty that she's always held for me. Coming to college was a really big deal because it was the first time that I really encountered white people. Um, not that there weren't white people where I grew up, I had plenty of white teachers, but just, I guess, the cognizance that I was not white, um, that white uh, was different. Essentially that meant that I wasn't beautiful, um, at least not according to those standards. I started taking pictures of myself, lots and lots of pictures of my face especially, um, just my hair and I would look at my nose and I would look at my lips and, and just like my skin and it was just something that I needed so that I could just come to terms and understand and just begin to appreciate the fact that I'm not white and that, that my heritage includes indigenous people, it, it includes African slaves and, and natives from, from Panama and from Puerto Rico. I've come to understand that while I don't fit the dominant standard of beauty, um, I'm not going to let anyone dictate for me what it means to be beautiful. And I've definitely reappropriated that decision and redefined it for myself. Um, to the point where today I can say, Yes, I'm not white, and I'm proud, and I am beautiful. <laughs> I 
buscado por doquiera que yo voy y no te puedo hallar. ¿Para qué quiero tus besos si tus labios no me quieren ya besar? Sabe por